Welcome into another bonus episode of Hockey Inside Out. I'm your host, Mo Khan, alongside Stu Cowan and Rick Green. We are joined by Pat Hickey, who will be retiring this week after a 57-year career in journalism. He's been a Montreal Gazette sports columnist for many years, has covered the Montreal Can- Canadiens since 1991. Pat, I ask you this question. Who was your favorite Canadiens coach to cover and your lasting memory for the Montreal Canadiens? Yeah, the um, the coaches, uh, I, I generally had a pretty good relationship with, with all the coaches. Uh, Jacques Demers, who won the last Stanley Cup in 93, was my favorite. Um, and uh, I always got along really well with him. And, and uh, he wrote the uh, introduction for one of my books. And, uh, you know, we, we always had a good time. Uh, there are very few coaches that I didn't enjoy dealing with. Uh, Mario Tremblay was a notable exception. He came in, he was just uh, a, a bit too arrogant, uh, thought he knew it all. Uh, they suggested that he go and spend some summer, uh, some time in the summer with Roger Nielsen, who used to have a gathering for coaches every summer in Peterborough. And, uh, you know, these were established coaches. We'd go there, they'd bounce ideas off each other. And he, he said he didn't want to go because he, he already knew how to coach. And he didn't really. He became a pretty good coach after years working as Jacques Lemaire's assistant. And, um, you know, but if he had taken, if he had that guidance beforehand, it would have been, it would have been a lot better off. Uh, Michel Terry in the first time around, we had, we butted heads a few times, but uh, we became pretty good friends. And in fact, he just invited me out to lunch this summer. And, uh, uh, I I always had a lot of time for uh, uh, for Claude Julien, who got a raw deal, you know, here twice. He got a raw deal in Boston. He got a raw deal in New Jersey, where he had a team, you know, primed for a Stanley Cup run, and and they fired him with three games to go in a regular season. Um, so, uh, a guy I did not deal with professionally, but but. Uh, had a pretty good relationship with with Pat Burns, um, who was gone by the time I started uh, covering the Canadians. But um, we both lived in the eastern townships during the summer. We spent some time together. Um, When they dedicated the Pat Burns Arena in Stansted, he was in the late stages of of his cancer. Uh, And I remember we were sitting outside the arena and he said, you know what I'd really like to do? He said, I'd like to put you on the back of my motorcycle and drive off to the Dalton pub and have a few cold ones. But it's not going to happen. It's never going to happen again. And, uh, you know, a few months later, he, he died. And, uh, uh, it, you know, it was a guy who was a lot of fun to be with. And, and uh, you know, it, it's it's interesting because over the years, I talked to a lot of coaches, uh, thinking of Jacques, uh, Jacques Lemaire, Pat Burns, um, Alain Vigneault, uh, you know, who all talked afterward, after having been the coach, they all talked about what a terrible job it was mm-hmm. and how they hated it. And, uh, you know, I always found that interesting. And, and mostly they, they hated dealing with the media and fortunately the French media and, uh, which I found surprising because, you know, these guys were all francophones, but, uh, uh, and, and that was, uh, as far as my favorite memory actually predates my, my time at the Gazette. Uh, I covered some hockey, uh, in, in the sixties and early seventies, uh, when I was at the Montreal star. And one of the first games that I got to cover as a main guy, I covered some, some games, uh, covering the visiting dressing room and doing sidebars. And, but one of the first games I covered as the main guy was the night John Bilbo scored his 500th goal. And uh, Red Fisher, I think, had some radio or TV commitments that day. And he said, yeah, hey, kid, you, you're going to do the game story tonight. Nobody expected Bilbo to reach 500 because he had a hat trick that night. And, uh, and so I said after the game, I said, Red, do you want to – you want to do the game as, you know, big game. I said, no, nah, it's all yours, kid. And I'm pretty sure that that story ended up on the front page of the Montreal Star. And uh, so I was very, very grateful for that opportunity and grateful to be witnessing a, 
you know, a, a big moment in Canadians history. Well, the other, the other, the other memory of course is the last Stanley cup that I covered. Um, and, uh, and that was, of course, marred by the riot afterwards. And, uh, again, ended up with, with a front page story. Uh, I also covered the first two games of the summit series, but, uh, one of them was a loss, and then there was the win in Toronto. Neither one of them was was very was very memorable. Uh, I also covered the I covered the New Year's Eve game for the Toronto Sun, and I think that I'm one of the few people who didn't think it was a very good game. Ken Dryden would agree with me. Um, <laughs> that's. Uh, but yeah, you know, most people thought it was it was a great game. I I just didn't think it was it was that good. Oh, I'm grateful that when I was a young guy in the journalism business and joined the Gazette, I had three amazing mentors, colleagues, and Red Fisher who first hired me at the Montreal Gazette Sports Department, Michael Farber who made a point of being at Pat's final game at the Bell Center the other night and in the press box uh, amongst us when we had a toast to Pat before the game, and Pat Hickey. The legend Pat Hickey, who was uh, you know, a, a colleague, a friend, hardest working man in sports media. The main lesson I learned from Pat is just what it means to work hard. It's one thing to say you're working hard. It's another thing to work hard. And Pat knew all about working hard. It's interesting, though, Pat, you mentioned Claude Julien, too, because and I know, Rick, you you know Claude. You worked with him. Uh, I've always said people can argue whether they think Claude Julien was a good coach or not. I think he was. But you cannot argue that he was a class act and a real gentleman. And I like my, you know, you touched on Pat Burns. I had a chance to uh, play for him and uh, he was a real uh, players coach and a real, a real good, fun, honest guy that, uh, you know, I, I really enjoyed the, every, everything about him other than the fact that every time I would fall asleep on the plane with my boating book, he would wait for me to fall asleep and then come back and steal my book and I'd never see it again. So. <laughs> I, I also covered some games back, you know, when uh, when Scotty Bowman was the coach, and uh, uh, I remember one time he set me up pretty good. He, he had um, Sears the Bard skating as a uh, as a forward, and uh, he told me afterwards, that, you know, we're gonna we're gonna try an experiment. You know, Sears had had the accident with his leg and. And we felt that he could be better as a forward. And and I went back and I, I started writing a story and and uh, Red said, What are you writing about? And I said, Well, this is it. and he said, They're pulling your leg. And uh, it was a uh, you know, young guy, uh, you know, we'll 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 see what he see how gullible he is and uh, and but even to this day, one of the things I'm gonna miss is going to Tampa because uh I would get there for the media meal and I would sit down for an hour or so with Scotty and Jimmy DeBolano. And, uh, you know, I, I think I'm a pretty good storyteller, but these guys have some great stories and uh, it, it's always interesting to, to hear them talk. And... Well, Pat, it's too bad Pat Burns isn't still around because I'd love to see you right off into your retirement on the back of his Harley with him. That would be classic. <laughs> Drink some cold I, ones as well. And, and I'd um, follow you to the pub. Exactly. <laughs> one, one time when he called me up and he said, uh, we're going to go to the Dalton Pub tonight and, and Bob Berry's going to gonna join us. And I said, okay, you know, I'll, I'll join you on two on two uh, conditions. So one, you guys don't spend an hour or so talking about what a terrible job coaching the Canadians is. And two, Berry springs for a round. And neither, neither one of those things happened. <laughs> uh, by the way, Pat, before we end off this segment here, uh, who's going to pay for lunch, you or Michelle Terrian this summer? I assume Michelle is because he uh, he made the invite, and uh, <laughs> I don't think I don't think Michelle's uh, um, Michelle's not in the same category with uh, Ken Dryden or or Bob Berry. Uh, I did. I did the first interview with with the Dryden in Montreal. He was playing for the AHL team, and I suggested we sit down over lunch and 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 uh, and he sort of hemmed and hawed, and uh, he used to bring his he used to bring his lunch, to, you know, bring something to the uh, uh, to the to the forum, and uh, 
I said, no, the Montreal Star is going to pay for it. Said, oh, that's fine. You're good. <laughs> uh, and uh, so it was, uh, again, you know, he was he was interesting guy to, to talk to um, because he, you know, he was a pretty, pretty bright guy. And, uh, but there were, there were some guys that were, you know, some guys that really weren't well as well educated as as Ken, but could be very interesting, uh, you know, it, it, you know, for various reasons and and things like that. But um, as I say, I always enjoyed you know dealing with players. It changed over the years, though. I remember when I started out in the business, I was probably making as much money as some of the players, and we lived in the same neighborhoods and uh, and. Uh, I could go over after a Canadian's practice at the, at the forum, you could go over to the, uh, the brasserie in uh, Lexus Neon Plaza, the Carbonair, and I could go down and sit down and talk with players. And uh, if, you, if you miss Toe Blake um, after a practice, you could go to Toe Blake's tavern and sit in the back room in his office and just talk hockey. And uh, uh, those days are long gone. And even in those days, he only had three or four the interviews, you'd talk to the coach afterwards in his office and there'd be three or four people there. And now there's 20, 30 people. Uh, you know, on a, on a slow day, there's 20, 30 people. <laughs> Seven or eight cameras. Um, and the, the, the business has certainly changed in that respect. Well, we can go on forever on this topic here, Pat. And uh, there's some awesome stories that you regale to us here on this uh, bonus episode of Hockey Inside Out. Don't forget to subscribe and like on our page and send us your questions uh, in the comments. We'll be conversing about that. And like our YouTube page for Hockey Inside Out. And sign up for the newsletter at MontrealGazette.com slash newsletters. And for full episodes and bonus content, head on by Hockey Inside Out. And we look forward to conversing about that on the future episode. On behalf of Stu, Rick, and Pat Hickey, we wish you a great week. We'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. Yeah.